Welcome back to the bench. We've got the rusty ICOM 735. I thought I'd give you one last look at what we're starting with. So there's our display with all the crusty stuff and uh, curtains coming down the side and uh, a blob covering the receive mode. So that's where we're starting. We'll go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me, unplug it and uh, start the action. And if this goes super well, we will unsolder the LCD and pull it out the front without a big uproar. So when you first start to lift the heat sink that holds the power up here, the first thing that happens is uh, J9, I think it is, gets tight. So you have to pull out J9. And that gives you a bit more access to get in here. So the question will be, is having J9 out enough, and it might be, to get the Hako into uh, there. Let me see if I can zoom in on it for you. So there you can see that line of uh, here, this line, that's the back of the LCD. So I think we might pull out a couple more so we can get a little more distance on this. So this one is fairly obvious because I think it's, let's see, that's a three pin and this is a four pin, so that's pretty safe. So we'll pull those out. So those can only go back one way. That gives us a little bit more. I think that's actually plenty. So now we can get in there and get to that row of pins. So we'll pull the front off just to see if we uh, understand what we're up to. And I finally get to <clears throat> get to use the new $29 Ryobi from Home Depot, which is way better than having the big, <laughs> the big DeWalt drill up here humming away. So these uh, will go into the bucket in the back. We got two more here. It seems to be just about the right thing for the bench. It, it may not be super powerful, but it also doesn't weigh a ton. All right, then. I think we've got all the right things off already, so I can pull off this panel. Maybe. Yep, we can. All right, we'll put that in the back. So you can see that if I actually get those unsoldered, this should just pull out the front. It's already fairly loose. So that's what we're gonna try. And if I get the wires a little bit out of the way, I won't burn them with the Hako. So we'll tuck those back there. That blue one looks pretty much like it'll get burned. All right, I think that looks, maybe. Let's, let's do a test fit and see if the Hako will go in there. And uh, it's off, so we won't cause any damage. It looks like if I was super careful and, uh, and had the hands of a surgeon, I could work my way down those pins and uh, that gets me to there. It, it does look possible, what do you think? Now the question is whether I should do it with you guys watching or not, because uh, if there was any burning go going on or any smoke coming up from nearby wiring, that would be too embarrassing. I think I might have to put a tie wrap on those and pull them out of the way. They're, they keep wanting to come out. We could unplug those and move them out of the way, I guess. I'll try that. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's see, we'll get some light down here. Yeah. 
So that was there. And it seems to be labeled J8. And I think we'll pull out this one. And let's see. This J seems to be labeling that one. Oh, I see this is J4. So we'll pull out J4 also. And that, let's see, does that have more pins than that? That has uh, one less. So it looks like we're safe still. Everything has a unique number of pins. And then J5 also. And it helps a lot. So we'll get those out of the way and tucked out back here so we won't burn them. What do you think? I don't know if that helped or not. I think it just made them more exposed this way. Maybe they can all go uh, out this hole out the back here. Yeah, I think that does it. I think that looks pretty clean. We're going to go for that, I think. I'm half tempted to take the power amp off because things will get a lot easier. And that looks pretty easy. If I look at the power amp, I think we have... Uh, Maybe even just leave these cables on. It looks like, let's see, what do we have? I think I might be bending the chassis, heavens to Betsy. So it looks like if I, <laughs> the poor rusty icon, I'm gonna pull off this cable. It looks like these two screws on the back were actually not a hinge, I think they were bending. So let's, uh, sorry to Mr. Rusty Icom, and let's take those out. Well, that one just twisted off, so that must have been extra rusty. This one's coming out nicely. That poor Rusty Icom, I guess maybe we bent it and fatigued the screw. So note to self, if you're taking your Icom apart, that's not a hinge, that is uh, bending the chassis. So, uh, Sorry about that. We'll uh, have to figure out how to get that remnant of screw out of there. See that? There might be enough to pull off that. <laughs> you know, I used to have an old man friend that was across the street when I was a kid, and uh, whenever something went awry, he said it was done by prune pickers. So I guess at this point, I'm uh, the prune picker as I bent the chassis and broke a screw to get to the to the display. All right, well, we're, we're up to eight minutes, so I think I'm going to stop there, get the Hako warmed up, and I'll come back, and we'll see if we can get this thing apart.